time that you said, if you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. And it seems. No, I, didn't say I have to say, if you're fully vaccinated in an area where we do not have. Well, let me clarify. In May, you made it sound like a vaccine May, was the true. ticket to losing the mask forever. And it, that, that is true at the time, because I thought there were people who were going to understand that getting vaccinated made a gigantic difference. And what happened was, the new variant came along, they didn't get vaccinated, it was spread more rapidly, and people, more people were getting sick. That's the but Mr. President, I have a question about something that you just said. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you just said there is no wall high enough and no ocean wide enough to protect us from the virus. So what is the thinking behind letting untested and unvaccinated migrants cross the southern border into U.S. cities in record numbers? There is. What we're doing, we have not withdrawn the order that is sometimes critical or criticized, saying that unvaccinated people should be go back across the border. But unaccompanied children is a different story because there's that, that's the most humane thing to do is to test them and to treat them and not send them back alone. A follow up is he <laughs> just Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. If you're not asking me a mean one like you usually do. <laughs> it's something interesting, I think, that has not come up. Uh, President Obama says that there is footage and uh, records of objects in the skies, these unidentified aerial phenomenon, and he says we don't know exactly what they are. What do you think that it is? I would ask him again. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Come on, boss, let's go. Mr. President, your voice sounds a little different. Are you okay? I'm okay. I have a test every day to see a COVID test. I have a check me for all the strands. What I have is a one and a half year old grandson who had a cold who likes to kiss his pop. <laughs> and he'd been kissing in my anyway, so uh, but it's just a cold. And then, so on COVID policy, it seems like the administration is starting to soften some of the language. There's this new op ed where you talk about uh, COVID and we are going to beat it back. Are you no longer going to shut it down? No, well, we got to beat it back before we shut it down. Look, this is going to take time worldwide. In order to beat COVID, we have to shut it down worldwide. In the United States of America, we're doing everything that needs to be done <coughs> to take care of the American people within our borders. But look what's happened. You know, we're starting to make some real progress, and you find out there's another strain. And the idea that you can build a wall around America to keep any COVID from around the world out is not, the, not there. And besides, that's one of the reasons why. I know we get criticized, I get criticized for not doing more for the world. But we've done more for the world and providing vaccines available and help than any nation, all every other nation in the world combined. In addition to that, in addition to that, we've also, with regard to India and other countries, and we're working around the clock. Remember, I suggested we suspend the patents, let everybody be able to have access to this so they can make the vaccine in their own countries. And thirdly, in Southern Africa, uh, for example, South Africa has all the vaccines they need. They don't want any more vaccines now. One of the things I'm considering is how can we help them deal with the issue of uh, the, as I said to you before, when the biggest challenge we had in the beginning of this administration, in my view, was not getting the vaccines produced, although that was not easy. And I've got to give, you know, President Trump, early on, went out and tried to got them to do the research to try to get the right vaccines. But logistically, logistically, getting the vaccine from a container that gets delivered to you, to a hospital, to a state, to a, and getting it in someone's arms, that's a very, very difficult thing. And we did it better than anybody in the world has done it, but we got to try to help other people. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let me take the one question from the most interesting guy that I know in the press. 
That's you. Mr. President, there had not been a U.S. service member killed in combat in Afghanistan since February of 2020. You set a deadline, you pulled troops out, you sent troops back in, and now 12 Marines are dead. You said the buck stops with you. Do you bear any responsibility for the way that things have unfolded in the last two weeks? I bear responsibility for fundamentally all that's happened of late. But here's the deal. You know, I wish you'd one day say these things, you know as well as I do that a former president made a deal with the Taliban that he would get all American forces out of Afghanistan by May 1. In return, the commitment was made, and that was a year before. In return, he was given a commitment that the Taliban would continue to attack others but would not attack any American forces. Remember that? I'm, I'm being serious. Uh, no, I, I'm asking you a question. Be, uh, because I'm before... No, 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 wait a minute. I'm asking you a question. Is that, is that accurate, the best of you or not? What? I think they have an issue that people are likely to get hurt. Some, as we've seen, have gotten killed, and that it is messy. The reason why, whether my friend will acknowledge it or has reported it, the reason why there were no attacks on Americans, as you said, from the date until I came into office, was because the commitment was made by President Trump, I will be